what is happening? Why, when I go to bed, do I have this crazy high glucose spike? It's really concerning. It's really weird. It is weird if you don't know what you're looking at. So I started to investigate it. When I look at my continuous glucose monitor, when I go to bed, I have a pretty high spike in glucose and then it comes back down and it kind of stabilizes. And then I wake up with moderately high levels of glucose that are associated with being fat adapted. That's pretty normal. But the spike at bedtime was concerning me. I was like, why am I peaking like up over 120, 130 points sometimes when I'm laying down? Then I put it all together and it made sense. Hey, this video is brought to you by a company called True Kava. True Kava is a kava supplement. If you ever had kava oil before, it is a really cool product. Okay, so it can help you feel really relaxed and really calm. So they have actually kava bars and kava drinks that you would get in countries like Fiji or South Pacific Islands. It's pretty fascinating stuff. Okay, the way that it works is it almost works like a mild sedative in a way, except it's interesting because you develop sort of this response with it that makes you feel very calm. It doesn't sedate you and impair you. You feel like you're almost getting the effects of going out and you know socially drinking but without the actual impairment. It's pretty interesting stuff. So I put a link down below and if you use that link you can save 15% because True Kava is a sponsor on this channel so they extend some savings out to those that watch my channel. So that link is down below in the description to try out a little bit of kava oil. It is very cool stuff. I think you'll like it. Okay, so here's kind of my hypothesis and then I backed it up with some data. So I kind of want to do these series every now and then where I talk about my hypotheses and what I experience and then how I back it up with data. Okay, so I'm very active during the day. Generally speaking, I'm not sedentary. I like I'm always moving around doing something. In fact, it's kind of a curse for me. Like I have to be doing something. And when I'm in a ketogenic state, that means that I already have a little bit of stable glucose just because my body is predominantly running on fats. But that doesn't mean that when I move, my body doesn't take up glucose. So while I'm moving around throughout the course of the day, I am sort of artificially keeping my glucose levels stabilized because my cells are needing that glucose. My cells are bringing the GLUT4 transporter up to the surface of the cell membrane to be able to grab that glucose because the muscle cells are very sensitive to glucose. And since I carry a larger amount of muscle, it makes sense. But then as soon as my head hits the pillow and I lay down and I stop, all of a sudden, my glucose levels that were just normalized because they were getting glucose was getting taken up by the muscle cell suddenly spikes up because now my muscles aren't demanding any glucose at all. So I get this pretty big spike because I'm fat adapted. So my body is not going to just use glucose at will. When I'm at rest, it wants to use fats because it makes way more sense because I'm fat adapted. But when I'm moving around, yeah, it'll use the occasional bit of glucose. So then when I lay down, the glucose sort of pools up and I get this big spike. And then after a little while, I recalibrate, repressurize, and the glucose levels come back down. So this is pretty intriguing, and that's at least my hypothesis on it, right? My glucose tolerance is actually rather low, which is a common thing with people that do keto. It may seem like your insulin sensitivity is going to improve, but if you do keto for a long period of time, it's actually the opposite. Your glucose tolerance goes down. So I need sort of an additional demand from exercise or activity in order for my cells to want to use glucose properly. Okay, otherwise, like if I was not doing keto, my cells would be so efficient at using glucose, because that's the primary substrate, that it would never really change even when I lay down because the cells are using glucose just as the norm. Okay, now, when you look at the data, it's pretty interesting, because there's a study that was published in the American Journal of Physiology that took a look at the circadian rhythms of insulin, and now it starts to make some sense, especially if you're doing keto. So at night, between like 12 a.m. and 6 a.m., your insulin levels are at their lowest lowest and between 12 p.m. and 6 p.m. your insulin levels are peaking at their highest. Well, they're inversely related with melatonin levels. When melatonin levels are high, insulin levels are low in the middle of the night. When insulin levels are high, melatonin levels are low in the middle of the day. Well, if you look at this, well, when I go to bed, my insulin levels are going to drop, right? So my insulin levels drop, meaning blood glucose that would normally get into the cell via insulin is going to pool up even more. And because I'm so sensitive to these changes, because I do keto, that makes perfect sense. Now, the other thing we have to remember is that our muscle cells are not going to require a whole lot of glucose when we're on keto. They're used to using free fatty acids for fuel. So that means that that whole situation is going to get exacerbated at night, right? Because 
Now our bodies are used to utilizing fats. Glucose are already pooling up a little bit. And then the second that we are stopping moving and we're sedentary, then the glucose can pile up even more because there's no real beta oxidation demand either. Everything just kind of pools up until your body regulates. So if you start noticing that your blood sugar levels spike at night, or if you wear a continuous glucose monitor and you'll see that they spike after you go to bed, it's nothing to really be alarmed at. However, it does prompt me to want to make some changes. Maybe that means that I need to periodically add more carbs into the equation so that my glucose tolerance improves because the goal is to keep consistent insulin levels and consistent glucose levels, not to have huge, huge spikes that are out of your control. The other thing that I have to factor in is glucagon. My glucagon levels are probably very high all the time because glucagon is a hormone that triggers the release of stored fat and triggers the release of glycogen in the form of glucose. So because I sit in a deficit a lot of the time, because I'm either fasting or keto or I'm triggering this AMPK response, I am allowing this sort of glucagon response to liberate glucose out of muscle glycogen all the time, therefore keeping my glucose levels relatively high. So it's another thing to consider. It doesn't always mean that it's bad. If your glucagon levels are high, it can mean that your body is burning fat as well and you're in sort of that once again like AMPK state in which your body is activating longevity genes like FOXO and sirtuin one and all this stuff. So anyhow, that's my hypothesis and I'm sticking to it. I'll see you tomorrow.